welcome students to Chem Estry. In our previous video, we discussed four cations and how to test for them using aqueous ammonia and aqueous sodium hydroxide. We learned that in tests for cations, what we are interested in is whether a precipitate will be formed or not. And if a precipitate will be formed, what is the color? What is the nature? And when we add excess of the reagent, will the precipitate stay or it will dissolve? Today, we are going to continue with the remaining four cations. Copper 2 plus, ion 2, ion 3, and ammonium ion. So let's start with copper 2. Copper 2 ion. Let's start with copper 2. So I'll pour a small amount of my copper 2 in this test tube. Then I'll add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise. I'm seeing a blue precipitate. Can you see it? Let me add it in excess and see what happens to the precipitate, whether it will dissolve or not. So I'm forming blue gelatinous precipitates. Can you see it? I can simply say blue precipitates, insoluble in excess. Then, I will take another portion of this sample. Then, this time, I would add aqueous ammonia, dropwise, then in excess. Blue gelat uh, sorry, blue precipitate. Can you see the blue precipitate? Let's add it in excess and see whether the precipitate will dissolve. So we have blue precipitate dissolving to form a very deep blue solution. So let's record our results. We got a blue precipitate that was soluble in excess sodium hydroxide to form a deep blue solution. A deep blue solution. Let's move on to the next ion. Fe2+. Plus. This is our Fe2+. Plus. I'm going to pour a small amount of our Fe2+. Plus in a test tube. Then I'll add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise. We are forming green gelatinous precipitate. Can you see it? Let me add the sodium hydroxide in excess and see whether the precipitate will dissolve. It's not dissolving, huh? So we have a green precipitate. Where is gelatinous, huh? Um, some people call this one dirty green precipitate. So you can either say green precipitate or dirty green precipitate. Green precipitate insoluble in excess. Let's take another portion of the same Fe2+. Plus.
And this time, we are going to add aqueous ammonia, dropwise and then in excess. We are still forming this green precipitate again. Then in excess, will it dissolve? The precipitate persists. So we have green precipitate. Insoluble in excess. Let's move on to the next cation, Fe3+. Fe3+. Okay, so I take a small portion of our Fe3+. Then, I add my aqueous sodium hydroxide, dropwise. I'm forming a reddish brown or a red precipitate. That one too is gelatinous. Can you see it? Let me add it in excess and see whether the precipitate will dissolve. The precipitate is not dissolving. So we have reddish brown or red precipitate. So I'm going to call it reddish brown precipitate. Insoluble in excess. Then I take another portion of my Fe3 plus, but this time I would add aqueous ammonia, dropwise first, then in excess. Dropwise. I'm still forming my reddish brown precipitate. Eh? Then in excess, would it dissolve? My reddish brown precipitate is not dissolving, even after I've shaken it for a while. So it's insoluble in excess. So we have reddish brown precipitate insoluble in excess aqueous ammonia. We go on to our last but not the least. We have ammonium ion. So we divide it into two portions. Well, the first portion we add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise, then in excess. Then we do something we have not done so far. We will heat in a water bath. Now, whilst we are heating, we will take a red litmus paper. A red litmus paper. Then I'll get it wet. Then I'll bring it closer to the tip of the test tube. Do you see the color changing? Changing to blue. That means there's a gas coming out from our mixture. But this gas that is coming off is basic. So it is turning a red wet litmus paper to blue. And there's only one gas that has that property. And that is ammonia gas. So when you add aqueous sodium hydroxide dropwise and then in excess to a sample containing ammonium ion, there is no visible reaction 
However, upon heating, upon heating, a gas that turns red litmus paper blue evolves. And we are saying that gas is what we know as ammonia gas. It is a basic gas. And apart from using the red litmus paper, when you get closer to blow air up the test tube towards your nostrils, hmm, you, you will sense a very pungent smell with a smell just like urine. And with gas smells like urine, ammonia gas. So that is the test for ammonium ion. Secondly, we take our last sample and add aqueous ammonia, dropwise, then in excess. And still there is no visible reaction. Or you can write no precipitate formed. So with these four cations, always remember copper is blue. So copper with aqueous sodium hydroxide, blue precipitate, insoluble in excess. That is what I mean by copper is blue. Even with aqueous ammonia, still you get blue precipitate. However, this precipitate is soluble and it forms a very deep blue solution. With ion 2, both with sodium hydroxide and ammonia, ammonia solution would give us the same green precipitate, which is insoluble in excess. The same applies to ion 3 plus. For that one, with sodium hydroxide and aqueous ammonia, we get reddish brown precipitate, which are both, in each case, insoluble in excess. Then, for ammonium ion, when you add sodium hydroxide, drop twice and in excess, there is no visible reaction. However, when you heat that mixture, a gas with a pungent smell, smelling like urine, comes off. And that gas is ammonia. To test for that gas, we can just get a moist red litmus paper and bring it closer to the gas its color will change from red to blue. These are the various tests for these four cations. One more thing, something we didn't do. For the same ammonium ion where we added aqueous sodium hydroxide and heated it, we could have taken a glass rod, dipped it into concentrated hydrochloric acid and brought it closer to the tip of the test tube whilst it is being heated. You see white fumes. That's another test for ammonia gas. Thank you.